All right, I guess I'm gonna call this video coming out of the closet. What? Stay right there. <laughs> or maybe, you know, truth hurts. And why is never enough ammo defending Yankee Marshall and Forge from Freedom while they're implicit in a fraud? And is never enough ammo now implicit in that? I don't know. Let's jump into the video. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange, and uh, yeah, here we go again, making another video. Um, to the best of my knowledge, never enough ammo. Don't know if you've ever heard of him, but uh, he's one of the, the FUDs that hangs out with Yankee Marshall, and uh, he decided to jump into this fray and beat up on old Hank Strange um, because, in his words, I'm a hypocrite. There's a hypocrisy going on, and he can't abide that. He can't abide that, but he could abide fraud. He's cool with that. So he decided to make a video about me, and we're going to talk about that here. First, I want to talk to you guys uh, about the check that Sam from Forge from Freedom said that he was sending to us. Last night when we got back home from the podcast, it was actually there in the mail. So this morning I took it to the bank and deposited it. So hopefully if that clears, we will take that money and we'll send it out to GOA as well as um, uh, Marge Ture, who's running for city council in Philly. And it's, uh, it's just a crazy, weird thing that um, Sam from Fortune Freedom gets to make up the number of what he owes me. He gets to have three different spreadsheets, make up the number, send me this minimized number, and then I have to deal with that. But it is what it is, right? At least we got a check. Hopefully it clears through. Um, whatever. So these guys, I've already gone over that, and I know people don't have time for that. So I'm going to move on and talk about this stupid never enough ammo thing. Okay, so um, I'm going to roll in some of this video. So far as I know, when I'm, as I'm making this video, it's not actually uh, public on never enough ammo's channel. I think what he did with, with it was he posted it up on Patreon to the people who support him. Uh, someone sent me a link to it, so I took a look at it, and basically it's a video attacking me saying that I'm a fraud. Why does he say that I'm a fraud? Because we on Instagram, on IG, we do, um, we do this follow for a follow thing, which if you don't understand it, basically that's, you know, we go follow someone, we say, hey, check out what we're doing, you know, we're, we're doing gun stuff, you might be interested in that, then maybe they follow us back, maybe they don't. Um, I am running everything here, so I don't exactly have the time to do all of that because I've got to shoot the videos, edit the videos. I don't have a staff or anything like that, so I do have a company that does that on my behalf. I tell them what I'm looking for, that I'm looking for uh, people who are in America and who... Um, you know, believe in the Second Amendment, they're into guns and stuff like that. It doesn't always work out that way. It's a, it's actually, to me, no big deal. I, I don't have any kind of respect for any of the social medias in terms of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of those kinds of things. They're, de they're designed right now to fight against guys like myself who are in the Second Amendment community. Now, are there people on there who follow me? Yes, there are people on there who follow me that are in the Second Amendment community. I care about those guys, but I'm trying to grow my audience. Everything on YouTube is working to push down and suppress my discovery. So the only thing I have to do is go out to the social medias and use those to try to bring people in. And then they have all kinds of crazy, silly rules that's involved there. So because of those rules, like everything that I'm doing is something that they don't want on there. And the follow for a follow thing is not prohibited by their rules, so far as I know. They know I'm doing it. Um, I've never been suspended or anything for it. The only problems I've ever had with Instagram is they delete some of the posts that I make because they don't like what I'm saying there. But I've never gotten in trouble with Instagram. This is just something that I'm doing to um, help with discovery of the channel. And as you see in Never Enough Ammo's video, there are some people on there that, you know, you might say, oh, why is this person on there? I just don't really spend a lot of time with it. There are people outside of the country, all of that. Basically, Never Enough Ammo and Sam from Forge from Freedom got together to figure out how can they attack me and help make Yankee Marshall look better. So um, Sam basically knows about this because when he started and he was asking me how to grow social media, I said, hey, this is something people do. I gave him some suggestions and he did it. 
how do how do how can I prove that to you guys? I can actually roll in screen captures from both of them on Instagram did posts. I think Never Enough Ammo did it. Sam reposted it, attacking me for some people I believe that had Muslim names. I don't know why they chose the people with the Muslim names. Like those guys can't uh, believe in the Second Amendment, even if they don't live in America, they can. But hey, they chose it. They thought it was funny, and they reposted it. Funny thing is, someone looking at that went and looked at Forge from Freedom and saw those same names that they were saying that I bought um, Forge from Freedom had them following him on IG that was interesting so when he pointed that out to Forge from Freedom he then went and deleted them how did he find out about that because you know he asked me about it that's what he knows this is the whole thing of when he threatened me that you know we were friends we were doing stuff he asked me things and I was like hey this is something you could do it's not in my opinion buying followers it's trying to um, cultivate uh, followers and go out there by telling people hey if you follow me I'll follow you back. To be honest with you guys, in the last two years, if you go back, I never really was into heavy into the social media, but I knew it was important. Then two years ago, I started talking to people that were experts and understood like Instagram better than me. And they told me, hey, these are good days. These are hashtags you should use. This is a good time to post stuff. This is a good way to look at it and figure out what's working. And we did talk about this uh, follow for follow or follow and follow stuff and all that. And I thought, okay, you know, I've got to do some kind of combination here of things because Instagram doesn't let you do certain things unless you get to a certain number. Now, I know there's people who follow me on all of the social media and they, you know, they want to be able to actually talk to me. So if you look at any of my posts, we can go down and look at my posts that I've done recently or we could go back a little while. I'm the person who goes in there and answers all those questions. I'm the person who talks to people. I post the things. So, you know... That is what it is. On top of that, I actually post on most of my social media my, a phone number that I have. It's um, not the first number for my phone. It's a second number that rings through on my phone so people can call me on that. I can roll that in here for people, whoever wants to call me and talk about stuff. People have been doing it through this whole thing. And uh, mostly people text me. So you can text me. I don't really talk to anyone if I don't know who they are. You text me. I text you back something. It's automated. Ooh. You know. And it just says, hey, thanks for texting me. Fill this form out so I can know who you are. And once I know who that person is, I talk with them through text. Or sometimes people really need to call me. So that's how I actually interface with people. But I do answer DMs on all the social media. You can, you can ask people. I answer the DMs on everything. But I just can't keep up with everything. Um, so that's why I did it. I, I openly admit it. I come out of the closet and I capitulate to that. I am guilty of trying to work against the SJW social medias out there. I'm a bastard because I want to work around them and keep fighting for the Second Amendment. Whatever. I'm pretty sure we can move on from that now. If you have problems with it, like I said, I'll roll in, I'll roll in my, uh, my number. But I'm telling you guys that this is something that Never Enough Ammo and Sam from Fortune Freedom came up with. And I could show you where when they put it up, Sam himself was under that same thing. If he thinks it's a horrible thing, why was he doing it? Because at the end of the day, it's probably not the greatest thing in the world. I wish we had our own platform. But this is what we have to deal with with social media. So whatever. So Never Enough Ammo now decides to make this video and call me out. And um, he decides to go to his fans, I guess, and say, hey, guys, what do you think about this? Knowing, obviously, somehow someone's probably going to send it to me. It's probably kind of like a uh, terror tactic, you know, to make me scared. The thing is, I'm not scared of the things I do. We talk about it on the podcast all the time. If people ask me, I tell them. There's lots of people who want to figure out how to use social media. They're gun guys. We wouldn't be on social media if we didn't want to use it to, um, to do certain things. And they ask me, and I tell them these things. And I tell them the upsides and the downsides. So, and, and I'm pretty sure that Never Enough Ammo is aware of all of this. But he, ultimately, this is a guy who works with Yankee Marshall. And he wants to save face for Yankee Marshall. He wants to save face for Sam. I'm guessing there's some kind of... Um, there's some kind of thing going on here. This, sound, this is starting to look like a big cabal of guys that took advantage of the gun community and stole thousands of dollars. The uh, hundreds of dollars that they owe me, that they whittled down, that was like 700 plus, and then they whittled it down to 300 plus. 
is the tip of the iceberg. There's thousands and thousands of dollars that they owe to people in the gun community. They know this, I know this. They put this info out there. So the best way to deal with this, instead of dealing with it head on, uh, so far as even now Never Enough Ammo is concerned, is to make a video and attack me. Funny thing about it is um, back on July 16th, Never Enough Ammo sent me an email. Just like Yankee Marshall sent me an email trying to get me to come on. They always want me to go on their um, social media. So I understand that. That's because they want to, to benefit from it. And I figure, why shouldn't I and my audience benefit from it? And I'm going to put it on my stuff. I don't have to talk to them. They could keep saying, oh, you're not a man. You don't have the balls to come on here. I have the balls to talk to lots of people about lots of things, but not people who I don't trust. Yankee Marshall has ambushed me before, and, and uh, he likes to use the N-word. Never enough ammo knows that. As a matter of fact, there's a video that my fans told me that Never Enough Ammo and Yankee Marshall did live, and Yankee Marshall used the N-word three times on there, and then Never Enough Ammo deleted it. But he used the N-word on my show before Yankee Marshall. He also called Colin Noir and Uncle Tom. He ambushed me. That's why I'm not going to deal with him, and he knows that already. You know, I, told, I don't want anything to do with this guy. I've tried to talk to him, but I don't want anything to do with him. And I don't want him to mention my name because I think he's toxic and horrible for the gun community, and I've tried to make that clear. But here's the thing. There's a letter that Never Enough Ammo wrote me, and I'm going to read that to you guys because this came July 16th before he made this video. I don't know if his video is up yet or not. I don't really care. I just know that I saw it, and I'm going to respond to it just like anything else that these guys want to come up with. So here's the letter. Hank. Uh, by the way, if you look at the letter, I'll run this in. G uh, Gmail put this weird warning there because he doesn't use that to communicate with me or a lot of other people, I guess. And they warned me about the email that he was using, but wh whatever, I don't know. So it says, Hank, I like you, always have, but you really should just talk to Yankee about all this. I know Yankee has asked and it could be a, a productive t talk for the both of you. Yankee Marshall doesn't want to talk to me about anything productive, just wants to defend himself or attack me to defend himself, but whatever. He says, here's the deal. I don't, this is him. This is never enough ammo, Matt. He says, here's the deal. I don't trust Sam, never have, and have actively stayed away when he has tried to get me in on all the things you mentioned in the video and more. I never mentioned it to Yankee because he treated him good. He treated Yankee good for some reason. And if Sam is ripping you off, which doesn't surprise me, that's what he says, that sucks and needs to be called out to your audience and other channels that might either already be doing business with FFF or might be considering it. It's weird. This is what he was trying to say to me when he, they were trying to ambush me, when Matt from Never Enough Ammo was getting involved with that. Or maybe it's true. Maybe this is what he really felt. But to imply that Yankee is intentionally involved with anything is ridiculous. And yes, towards the end of the video, you say Yankee's probably not doing anything intentionally, but you know that's what people will, not what people will listen to. But I'm just using their methods. That's how these guys go. They try to be, they try to, uh, you know, blow everything up and be, you know, Yankee Marshall's a drama queen. Everyone knows that. So I'm just using his own methods after I realize I can't talk to him and, and he's just going to keep using my name and throwing my name out there and trying to go after people through me, why, why would I believe what he's saying about Yankee Marshall? There's nothing here that proves that. Okay, so just to keep moving here. Point blank, Sam went to Yankee and said he was having problems with PayPal and everywhere else. True or not, I don't know, and neither does Yankee. Well, Sam showed all of this in his video. He exposed it what he did and how he got into that trouble. It has nothing to do with us. It's because he's a fraud. But you guys don't want to look at that. You don't want to investigate that. I try to help you, but you don't want to. Yeah, let me go back. Point blank, Sam went to Yankee and said he was having problems with PayPal and everywhere else. True or not, I don't know. And neither does Yankee. And Yankee did it because he, he's always gotten what he wanted out of Forge from Freedom, which is just... Uh, someone who would make his shirts without Yankee have to lift a thumb. He never cared about getting paid. Although I heard that money was supposed to go to charity and stuff like that. Yankee Marshall never cared about getting paid, and he also didn't care whether the money went to charity or whatever, right? At one, and he doesn't care if Sam is ripping off guys in the gun community either, obviously. Okay, 
Yankee Marshall has attacked people in the gun community without talking to them or asking them or talking to them like men or any of that stuff. Look up uh, Iraq veteran 8888 and you'll see what I'm talking about. At one point, Sam even donated a gun for the TYMPP to give uh, someone a gun to someone who was too broke to buy one. So why would Yankee think he needs to vet a shout out video about this guy? All his interactions with him have been positive. So why would he think twice about it? Um, Yankee Marshall admits that Sam owes him money. I think he might want to think twice about it. Even if he didn't before, when I say something, when I use his methods to say things, he should maybe think about it. This is a guy who's out there beating up the NRA because they're misusing people's money. He should think about it. And by the way, I've heard from people that they got bamboozled with these guys and they promised people they were sending them guns, they never sent them. Whatever. Okay. Um, he says, hell, this is Matt. Hell, I've done shout-out videos for more people than I can count. People who I met on YouTube and they uh, started some holster company or something in their garage and told people, I told people to go check them out. I never felt the need to vet them with the gun community first. Understood. Um, you know, we can all fall into that trap, but when you realize that you've done something wrong, you have to talk about it, and that's what I'm trying to do, but you guys are trying to hide that by beating up on me. Whatever. I'm a big, I'm a big guy. Um... To say that Yankee should have checked with you before making a video is kind of ridiculous. He was trying to give you a shout out in that video by mentioning your shirts. That's it. If he would communicate with the community, he would know better than this. And that's the point I was making. He says, look, Yankee is a big boy and could defend, defend himself. And truth be told, he doesn't care as much as his viewers do about this. Of course he doesn't care. His viewers care about money that comes from the gun community. Yankee Marshall could give two shits. I get it. I believe it. But as I said, I like you and your channel, and Yankee has been my friend for almost 10 years. I know him as well as anyone on the internet. And while I absolutely believe Fortune Freedom needs to be called out, he says that, I absolutely believe Fortune Freedom needs to be called out. It was kind of a shitty thing to imply that what you, uh, imply what you did about Yank, uh, imply what I did about Yankee. So I feel a need to say something. Okay, I hear you. But I made my point and why I did it that way. So you've got your point, I've got mine. I really do think you should hop on a chat. That's the point of all of this always with these guys, to get me to hop on a chat. Um, I do a chat Monday to Friday, uh, 7 to 9. I talk to people, I answer questions, even when they send people in there to go after me, even when Yankee Marshall comes in there to go after me. So whatevs. Um, Okay, I really think you should hop on a chat sometime with Yankee. He's he 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 rough, gruff, and an asshole. But he's one of the few people I've met in my ten years on YouTube that I actually trust and know is a good person. When you get past the asshole guarding the gate, then but then again, I'm an asshole too. So maybe I'm not the best judge. Anyway, feel free to respond or not. But either way, take care. That's um, <laughs> that's the um. That, that's the, the email that Never Enough Ammo sent me before. Then he makes this, he says all of that. I knew that these guys didn't really mean it. They, they were just trying to ambush me, get me to come on their thing. Their intentions to attack me. I've laid it out in videos how um, for using Sam from Fortune Freedom's own words, his own images that he showed that he's lying. I've laid it out. Other people have seen it. And they refuse to see it. Instead of dealing with that, they just want to keep playing this game. Oh, we're going to bring this up about you. We're going to bring that up about you. That's what Sam promised in the first place. And Yankee Marshall and now Never Enough Ammo are helping him do that. They want to continue this even though I want to let it go. You people will all see in the future how I didn't lie. But right now, if I'm out here standing on my own, that's the way that it is. If I'm not considered a man because of that, that is what it is. So... To talk about the stuff like coming out of the closet, here's what I have to say in Never Enough's ammo in his video that he did that I thought was kind of like weird and messed up. Several places he showed these guys, you know, who um, I'm following on there, that he showed them and, and tried to make it look like these guys were gay. Uh, this one right here. Oh, this one's, this one's cute. This one's sweet. It's just this one guy with all his different boyfriends, I guess. Maybe Hank just likes looking at pictures of him and that's why he follows him. Uh, this guy, oh, this guy, look at this. Maybe maybe Hank loves the sultry eyes, just the eyes that burn deep into your soul. Maybe that's what Hank likes about this guy, and that's why he follows him.
You know, he tried to say, oh, maybe Hank's interested in these guys. Maybe he likes the look in their eyes or something like that. And he was playing up this whole gay thing. I don't understand that. I thought that the gun community, unless you're a FUD Never Enough Ammo, I thought we were open to people from LGBT in the gun community. I know I am. I know that what I believe, I don't care whether someone's gay or not. Um, I know I have lots of friends and people over my life that have done things for me and helped me and trained me and I've worked with that are that are gay, transgender, all of those kinds of things. I don't judge them based on that. I think they're welcome in the gun community, but you somehow think that's a thing. Um, I'm not offended, although I'm not gay. I'm, I'm not into guys. I don't know. I guess I, I don't know why I would have to defend myself to you. It's so weird to me that Never Enough Ammo does a show. He's on here attacking me to defend someone that he works with every day that is openly LGBTQ. Q, T, or whatever it is in the gun community. Yankee Marshall's openly gay, and he works with him all the time, and I don't attack that. I'm cool with that. I have that, that has nothing to do with anything, but never enough ammo jumps on there to attack me when his friend that he's known for 10 years is openly gay. I, I, okay, I don't understand that. I don't know what's going on there and why you guys just keep refusing to look at the truth that you admit to me privately, but in videos you don't want to admit it. It's too bad. That's a shame. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about you throwing schoolyard things at me like you're not a man, you don't have the balls, you know, all of that. I mean, you obviously don't know me and, you know, if you think being gay is so horrible, I guess you're just a FUD and I get it, man. I understand. Ultimately, here's what I have to say. This is the truth. People can look at it or not look at it. If these guys keep playing these games and attacking me, whatever, I'll come up here. I'm not ashamed of the things that I've done or that I do. I talk about this all the time. And anyone who wants to do to talk to me about it in a civilized way, any of the people out there, you can always reach out to me. But I don't care about uh, Zuckerberg, uh, Facebook, or Instagram, or Twitter, or any of those things. I don't care about it. If I have to, I'll deep dive into my YouTube, the two YouTube channels that I have, and I'll show you guys, um, you know, what those channels look like. If these guys can do it, they could do it for you. They could take a look at it. They chose to go after Instagram. It really doesn't mean that much, and I'm not ashamed. I'm not worried about it. I'm also not ashamed of being attacked for being gay. Um, I've uh, done too much and lost too many friends that are gay. And shame on you for working with someone every day who is gay and then you want to attack someone and use that as a joke. It's not funny. I don't find it funny. I don't think it's cool. But you guys, I don't know. You're just going to keep doing this. I guess we're just going to keep doing this. I don't want to make this long. I don't want to, you know, I know people out there <laughs> don't care about this and don't want to hear from me on this. But I'm not going to let people just attack me and not say anything. So that's the way it goes. I'll let you guys know if that check clears. I'll let you know when I've sent the money to people. Um, and if these guys keep going, hey, I'll keep going. Peace.